So what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at a piece on La Familia Michoacana by Disturbed Reality. He's a card. He's like the cartel source of YouTube, at least, you know, from my perspective. I don't know too many other channels that go that in depth. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to watch some of his content about La Familia Michoacana. And then we're going to go to the comments and we're going to analyze the differences of opinion that people have about the conflict in Mexico and Latin America. There are some people who seem to think that Latin Americans are just so much more violent. Like this commenter says, the fact that so many regular people in Mexico form auto defensias to fight cartels and then become a cartel themselves and perform these brutal executions is disturbing. A frighteningly high percentage of the population there are capable of these acts. And that's basically a common opinion and this thread, that conversation thread, actually leads to some pretty good uh, exchanges. So let's check it out. La Familia Michoacana. In his local community, as a Robin Hood type figure, after his fake death in 2010, Michoacan natives, believing that he was dead, reportedly began to worship him as Saint Nazario, the knight of the town and the protector of the poorest. Today's La Familia Michoacana is a shadow of its former self but hasn't yet been entirely removed from southern Mexico's criminal landscape, despite the claims from Mexican authorities. As of right now, La Familia find themselves in regular skirmishes with CJNG and a splinter group by the name of La Nueva Familia Michoacana, who split from the main La Familia organization in 2011. Most of the graphic content surrounding La Familia stems from the ongoing battle with CJNG, most notably an incredibly brutal video where CJNG hitmen dismembered a La Familia member by the name of El Vargo. One video that was released in May of 2020 depicted the sheer brutality in which La Familia are capable of. The video showcased the brutal execution of two alleged CJNG members. I'd like to thank my good friend Soothsayer for recommending this case. The two victims in the video are young men who I would estimate are in their early 20s. The video was allegedly recorded in Zirandaro in the state of Guerrero. The video opens up and a man wearing an Under Armour t-shirt can be seen carrying a large combat knife. You see the two victims, both of whom have been stripped down to their underwear. One of the victims, the first victim, looks to be wearing a CJNG hat. Mm. The executioner briefly addresses the cameraman before the depravity takes place. The knife-wielding Sicario then takes the knife and drives the blade into the victim's chest, appearing to aim for the heart. Blood leaks down the victim's chest as the executioner wriggles and twists the knife as it's deep inside the victim. Somehow, the victim doesn't scream, though you hear what sounds like extremely loud hyperventilation. The executioner taunts the victim, exclaiming, La familia michoacana puto. The cameraman- All right, so now, let's go into this conversational thread. The fact that so many regular people in Mexico form auto defensias auto defense units to fight cartels and then become a cartel themselves and perform these brutal executions is disturbing. A frighteningly high percentage of the population there are capable of these acts. El Gato says, you can only push people so much. Somebody says, in Spanish, everything sounds sexy. Somebody said, be quiet, weirdo. <laughs> Money corrupts folks. Well, Mexico is very close-knit family, so if someone gets killed by a cartel, it might affect many people in one area. The snowball grows. No real law enforcement. Uh, effed up world we live in. Everybody's a killer. You just have to push them to their limits. To be honest, that's how us Mexicans are, and I'm not proud of it. When we have nothing, we're humble workers. But the second we get a little bit more than our slice, we become bullies that only care about our own. I think it's the same ratio in any society in American. Hold on. I think it's the same ratio in any society. In America, we have mafias and organized crime and gangs. People just don't film acts of violence like they do in Mexico. The level of impunity is insane. It's not even remotely close to the same. You are completely ignorant of what's happening down there if you think that. Most of humanity is capable of doing that type of thing. There's studies on it. Also, a big example is of, of it is Germany during the Holocaust. An entire nation basically allowed the murder of millions. Well, it's not that simple. 
Germany was, you know, after World War One, they were stripped of their glory, you know, and they were bitter. They they were facing a messed up economy, and things gradually happened. You know, it's not like they just agreed to what happened. They it, it, they were gaslit, you know, and they felt like. Hitler was the guy that was going to bring their glory back that was taken away during World War One. So, you know, it's deeper than that. We're both a few meals away from being that ourselves. You and me. Don't forget that. And it's just interesting to look at the, at the different perspectives. Filleting, dismembering, beheading, and eating someone isn't the same as a drive-by. Wow. U.S. gangs and other criminals have done that or do that. They just don't record it or at least post it online. Cops will catch up with them pretty quickly if they did. There's something particularly odd about it though. There are so many uh, there are so many other poor countries in the world, and sure violence is also present, but no other areas surpass the level of violence in Latin America. This I think can largely be attributed to Mexico's proximity to the US and it being one of the most mountainous countries on the planet. Fighting any force in the mountains is difficult for any military, even a superpower. So the border between the U.S. and Mexico is super large and not well protected. The guns, the gun laws that exist allow for people to take guns to Mexico. And then there's the demand, there's the drug demand, drug demand in the U.S. Basically, Mexico is the perfect country for, for excuse me, for drug cartels to arise. God, I got the hiccups. Arrive and thrive. <clears throat> He said, I hate to be that guy, but there are 331 billion people in the U.S., not 350 million. <laughs> I doubt it. I think it's more more than that. But yeah, man, this is just kind of interesting just to see the, the general public's opinion about this. You got a few people who are Mexican in this comment, in this uh, conversational thread. And, you know, I don't know, man. I don't think anybody's right. I don't think anybody's wrong necessarily. I just think that uh, cartels quite naturally make you think. And they make you wonder, why is this happening? And I think it's a lot of reasons for it. I do not believe that Mexicans and Latin Americans are just inherently more violent than any other group of people. Uh, I just think the perfect combination of factors came into play in Mexico. And I think one of the most important factors, like the commenter said, is the proximity to the U.S. and the U.S. demand for money. And I think that when money's on the line, people are willing to take things to the extreme. So, yeah, man, shout out to Disturbed Reality. Shout out to all the comments that I read. And, uh, yeah, man, it's just, it's something. Peace.